Yeah, so one of the things that we talked about on last week's training was the importance of following the system if you want to grow your cycles and if you want to grow your team. And one of the things that we had shared with you is that um, quite often we have people with established businesses, not a part of our organization who come to us for coaching. Um, we don't charge for coaching in that way, of course. Um, but we're always willing to kind of do an audit of people's businesses and kind of redirect them to the, to the degree possible. Uh, and nine times out of 10, it always comes back to the fact that they just don't have systems built into their business and they got to where they are, um, on nothing but enthusiasm and excitement and general influence within their networks, which is actually something we'll talk about tonight. And this particular person got off to a massive start with Isogenics. I mean, they made a significant amount of money in a very short period of time. They've spoken on stages before, like they, they're really an up and comer and the company have a really healthy business, but their business was dropping pretty, pretty steadily. And so they, they reached out to, um, to Eden for a little bit of guidance and Eden said, show me your system. And the answer was, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, what's your system? How do you want, how do you bring people on? What do the conversations look like? What's your process when you launch a new business partner? And this person said, I don't really have one. And Eden said, okay, well, I'm going to teach you our system. And uh, in two weeks, in two weeks, this person has enrolled four, four new people and increased their cycles by nine. Okay. So for those of you that are new, a cycle is when your two teams combine to create 900 points, you earn $54. But to give you an idea, to, to increase cycles by nine in just a two-week period is significant. That is an extra $500, uh, $500 a, a week, essentially, um, in an increase. So when you consider um, how quickly things can change when you're willing to sell out some of the principles we teach, should you choose to, that's an idea of what can happen. And like I said in the post, kind of sharing that result today, I make this very clear. Um, our way is not the only way of doing things. It's just the only way we know how to teach you to be successful because it's the formulas and the principles that we've, you know, we've built. And, you know, at the end of the day, like I have, you've heard me say this for years, some of you, and for those of you that are new, uh, just understand that I'm simply the GPS. Um, just like the GPS in your car, I'm going to tell you to turn right, go straight, make a left. But if you choose to turn left when we say make a right, like, okay, cool. No worries. We'll help you recalculate, but we're always going to give you the instructions that will get you to your destination with the least amount of traffic and the least amount of incidents so that you can get to where you want to be as quickly as possible. Uh, but the reality is um, most people that, that come into this business uh, are kind of like, and I'm just going to kind of self-deprecate here, kind of like men in that way who don't feel like they need to stop and ask for directions feel like, well, I, I know how to drive already. I know how to get where we're going. I, I did this once before, you know, years and years ago. And okay, cool. Um, here's what I would say, you know, and this is something that took me a long time to learn as well. Um, have the humility to be coachable. Have the humility to be coachable, you know, and what I've always, um, what I've always challenged people to consider is uh, kind of taking a look at what amount of money on a monthly basis would absolutely rock their world, like rock their world. And maybe if you were making $20,000 a month, that would absolutely change your world forever. And for most people that would, I mean, $20,000 a month, 240 some odd thousand dollars, you know, a year, 200,000 plus dollars a year. Like that's, that's unbelievable money that puts you in a huge upper echelon of income earners in the entire world for get network marketing just in general. And so what I always tell people is like, look, follow our system until you're making 20 grand a month. And at that point, if you want to change how you do things and invent your own stuff, like by all means, but if you've never made 20 grand before in your life doing anything, especially within network marketing, I would just kind of consider that success leaves clues. And look, I, again, I speak from personal experience in that I really had a huge ego when I first got into the business a long, long time ago, and I didn't listen. And not surprisingly, I failed miserably, miserably. You know, to, to put it in real perspective, in my first year and a half in network marketing, just to be very clear, in my first year and a half in network marketing, let me do the math here. I think I made after expenses, which was significant. Oh no, in that, I know I made no money. I was still negative, but in, in gross revenue, I think I made about $1,100 in a year and a half doing the do, talking with people, showing up at events, inviting people. I made about $1,100 in a year and a half. 
So clearly for me, something wasn't working and I had mentors that cared enough about me to kind of check me and say, are you willing to apply yourself in a real way and have the humility to be coachable? And what I realized was why wouldn't I be coachable when I was an athlete my entire life and I was coachable as an athlete. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense why I wouldn't be coachable in business. And then the other thing I kind of looked at was, well, they're successful. I'm not. They're happy. I'm not. They're living a life on their own terms. I'm not. What might happen if I have the humility just to be really coachable? Well, over the next 10 months, I made about a quarter million dollars. Do whatever you want with that. I don't care. <laughs> Do whatever you want with that. But having the humility to be coachable is an amazing thing. And so that actually is a good segue um, for, for tonight because, you know, one of the things that you hear a lot that I hear a lot and that I, and I actually asked Sid tonight, I said, what, you know, any, any thoughts on what you'd like to hear for training tonight? And she said, she talked about something that I worked with her on really early in her career. And for those of you that don't know, when Sid was first getting started, she actually lived with Eden and I for a little while. Um, she, uh, she lived with Eden and I. And so, um, you know, she, Sid was always a hard worker. There was never any question that she was working hard. She was, you know, making calls, prospecting, doing the do, uh, but she was getting, you know, very, very little results. And one of the things that we started to talk about was that what we have to understand is that success in any business is a byproduct of creating success in other areas of our life as well. And that in network marketing, especially, and sometimes this is painful feedback for people to hear, and I, and I appreciate that, but the reality is that in network marketing, for your first year and a half, two years, maybe three years, you will be paid in direct proportion to who you've been up until that point in your life. Okay? You will be paid in direct proportion to how people know you up until this point in your life. Now that's a brutal thing to consider, but when I reflect back on my career and I reflect back on that first year and a half, or I even reflect back on before I got into network marketing, when I was doing other businesses and I was trying to enroll people into the idea of what I was doing, I was constantly mocked and constantly made fun of and constantly laughed at and constantly criticized and constantly told I was crazy. And in hindsight, even though those things infuriated me and helped drive me in a lot of ways, in hindsight, I can't really argue with those people's response to me. And why can't I argue with those things? Because who I was in their lives was somebody who didn't follow through. Who I was in their lives was someone who didn't show up. Who I was in their lives was somebody who was out of integrity. Who I was in their lives was somebody who was just a bunch of hype with no real actual results or actual skills to back up what I said I was about to do. And so I had no credibility and I had no real trust and I had no real influence. And so as you're looking at going about building your business, yes, it's about doing the daily IPAs, but on the other hand, it's, are you willing to grow yourself in other areas such that, Brandy, get that thing off the screen. I can't look at it, but you know, get that thing off the screen right now. This is a dog only call. This is a, we don't do cats, we don't do iced coffee, and we don't do cauliflower pizza, okay? We don't do that on this team or for anybody watching the recording. We don't do that here. Get that thing off the screen. No, it is pretty cute. Is that a kitten? Is that new? Yeah? Cool. <laughs> so what I want you to start to, Sydney Lish, how dare you? You take that back right now. There's no such thing as cauliflower pizza. It's just baked cauliflower tomato sauce on it. By definition, pizza is made from dough, made from flour. Go look it up. It's not, I don't make the, my man right there. Look at Justin. That is pizza. That is pizza. Thank you. That's amazing. Anyways, back to what's important. <laughs> and yes, no iced coffee. And definitely no Alabama shirts or Alabama anything for that matter. Nope, definitely no Alabama football. Okay, let's stay focused, everybody. My favorite is like the people that, um, the, the people that uh, that watch the recordings, they must be like, what, how are, I don't understand. How do they, how are they doing this? How are these people doing this? Um, but <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about right now. Okay, here we go. This is more like a podcast nowadays, isn't it? Like, the, like today. Okay, so going back to areas of your life. We know, and you've heard this before, that people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. 
right? How many of you just go like this? How many of you heard that before? People do business, people they know, like, and trust. So let's break those down for a second. Okay, first of all, no. Well, how does someone get to know you, especially in today's world? How does someone get to know you? Well, we know that social media is a remarkable tool, but if all you're ever posting is before and after photos, is the beautiful shareables that Isodex comes out with, or if you're utilizing the social design studio, if that's all that they're ever posting and you're never coming on video, they're never gonna know you. And if you're not sharing from a place of the most overused word in the English language these days, a place of authenticity, and then followed by the second most overused word in the English language these days, vulnerability. Unfortunately, those are the best words to describe what I'm suggesting. If you're not coming from that space, people will not come to know you. All that they will come to know is that all you care about is whether or not you can sell them something, which of course influences whether or not they like you. But most importantly, the question is, do they trust you? Do they trust you? And what's really fascinating about developing trust is getting people to trust you, believe it or not, gets with you learning to trust you. Getting people to trust you learns starts with you learning to trust you. MC, are you including somebody or this? Or are you guys passing notes again? You guys are passing notes. Stop passing notes, kids. I'm, you know I can kick you off the call, right? You know I have that ability? I can just... Kick you off the call? Okay. Oh, another one. Oh, geez. We're going to have to clean up our onboarding system. Qualifying. From now on, if you guys are qualifying people to come onto this team, find out if they have cats. And if they do, they're just not right for us. Okay. Um, so learning to trust yourself. Well, how do I learn to trust myself? Well, the most important way I learn how to trust myself is I do what I say I'm going to do. I keep my commitments. So how many of you, just be really honest, drop one in the chat box, how many of you have made the commitment of, okay, this week, I'm going to ask three people to take a look at isogenics. How many of you have ever made that commitment? And then you didn't do it. Okay. So if you can't count on you to do what you say you're going to do, why should somebody else? Now, as we take a look at what's going on in the economy, and we take a look at the reality that we're probably barreling towards a recession. Now, the degree to which how significant the recession is going to be is up for debate right now, but it doesn't matter. We know that inflation's at a 40-year high. We know that we know that prices are skyrocketing. We know that the squeeze is on. We know that people are leaving their jobs, losing their jobs, this, that, and the other. So we also know that as budgets start to tighten up and as people look to invest their time and money and resources in other opportunities, the number one thing they're gonna be making their decision based on is trust. The number one thing. So what are some of the areas in your life that you can look at where you're out of integrity? And you just gotta take personal inventory. And the reality is that sometimes taking personal inventory is like cleaning out a storage unit that you haven't looked into for the last 15 or 20 years. And sometimes you open up that storage unit, you go, oh man, there's a lot of crap in here. A lot of crap. However, the storage unit's not gonna clear itself out. It's not. You gotta get in there, you gotta go through the stuff and you gotta keep what served you and you gotta let go of the rest. And as you clear out that storage closet, you're gonna create space. And what's interesting about when we create space in a healthy way is healthy things fill that space. But if we continue to avoid clearing out the storage unit, what's gonna happen? Cobwebs are gonna come in, rodents will find their way in there, cockroaches will get in there. Eventually all the stuff that you have in there will get ruined, including the good stuff. And so what I really want you to kind of take an inventory of again is, okay, if I'm getting paid in direct proportion to who people have known me as up until this point in my life, well, what are those things? And this isn't to be critical of yourself. It's not to beat yourself up. There's no shame in this process whatsoever. It's just about really giving yourself an honest evaluation of where you're at. So for example, if you look at it and say, well, people know me as quiet and introverted and shy and yes, of course, sweet and kind and loving. When you start talking about things or marketing things like, you know, building a business online or whatever it may be, there, there, there might be a disconnect for them. 
they might look at it and go, well, I only know her as shy and introverted and this, that, and the other. I don't know that I would trust getting into business with this person. Now that doesn't mean you have to go start dancing on bars, but it does mean you might want to look at it and ask yourself the question of like, okay, well, where can I stretch myself just a little bit to become a bit more extroverted? What are some of the areas in my life I'm willing to get a little bit more loud? Am I willing to stretch myself from a social perspective? Will I set, can I take myself to a networking event that scares the crap out of me to go to? Am I willing to just compartmentalize and chunk down this little area of life so that I can demonstrate to myself that people have the ability to know me in a new way? Am I willing to do that? Now, maybe you're like me. Maybe you were doing, you know, lines of coke off of bathroom toilets when you were in your early 20s, like I was. I don't hide any of my past from any of you. You know that. You know that I have no, I have no shame in my, in, in my life at all. So maybe you were like me. So when I started talking about people getting healthy, people making money, this, that, and the other, people looked at me and were like, bro, just last weekend, we were doing lines of coke off a of toilet seat together. Why would I get into business with you? How could I argue with that? I can't fight them on that, of course. So I had to go to work on cleaning things up in my life. I had to go to work on being known as someone who, who wasn't partying until five in the morning. I had to go to work on being someone who said, hey guys, thanks for the invite tonight, but I'm gonna stay home and read. You're gonna stay home and what? Yeah, I'm gonna stay home and read. Well, why? Because that life's not working for me anymore. That life's not working for me anymore. So where in your life, again, are you a little bit out of integrity that you're willing to clean things up? How have people known you up until this point and how would you like to be known moving forward? And that's a really big part of the equation. Now, here's what's really fun. You can do this alongside of building the business. And the reality is, if you put yourself in a daily action, if you put yourself in a constant movement, you're going to shine a magnifying glass on all of those areas where you're out of integrity really quickly, really quickly. But if you're not in action and you're burying your head in the sand, just hoping that this thing will build itself, hoping that people will come into your business, posting on social and just hoping that people will come in and just magically want to build a monster with you. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you're in for a really long, painful road, just in life in general, forget the business, but just in life. So what parts of your life are you looking to take on? And look here, there are people on this screen right now who I've worked with personally, who I'm looking at, who have done this, who have really taken on things in a big way. And I'm just going to call them out because I know you'd be comfortable with it. But Eric, for example, Eric, when I first met Eric, Eric was one of the most miserable human beings I'd ever met in my life. Miserable, angry, uh, cynical, uh, jaded, uh, I could use a number of other words to describe him. Okay. He wasn't very friendly. He wasn't, he, he wasn't a nice, he wasn't like a nice person to be around. He wasn't. And Eric had a business at the time and guess how well his business was doing. It was doing just well enough for him to understand that he should probably be angry and upset and not really good to be around because his business was crap. And why was his business crap? Because he was crap and his relationship was crap and how he was showing up was crap. But Eric said, I want something more for my life. So I'm willing to look at these things. And yeah, it doesn't feel good in the moment. But who Eric is today, five years later, happier, healthier, more vibrant, and by far, probably financially 10x more successful, 10x. If we were to put a number on how much he was making them and how much he's making here, through a combination of his, 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 what he does as, as, as a doctor, but also alongside isogenics, where, I, where Eric is financially night and day, where Eric is attitude night and day, where Eric is open to things, you know, what, what, and how Eric has come to be known night and day. Night and day. I wouldn't go that far, Brandy, but he's doing pretty well. Let's not give him too much credit, okay? We're, we're managing egos here, managing them. Okay. My job is to fluff up the ego a little bit. Okay, don't, don't, don't pour it on. But, but Eric was willing to look. Eric was willing to look. Mary Catherine also was willing to look. Also was willing to look. And Mary Catherine shares this story a lot. Mary Catherine came to NYKO. After NYKO, she got really fired up, really fired up. And she said, Zach, teach me how to do this. Teach me everything you know. And my response to Mary Catherine, because I had known Mary Catherine up until that point for about six and a half years, was my experience with Mary Catherine was she was extremely inconsistent. 
She did not honor her commitments. She did not trust herself. And she had a terrible time staying focused. So my response to MC was very simple. I will teach you everything I know, but I don't believe that you will stick with this long enough or stay focused long enough or be consistent enough to actually see this yield any results. I don't believe you'll do it. Now, that happened to be the right coaching for her in that moment, and it clicked something for her where she had to take inventory and go, wait a minute. First of all, F you, and maybe this is worth considering. Maybe this is worth considering. Maybe it's worth me looking in the mirror on this. A year later, she went from being $50,000 in debt to flourishing, affording her own place, moving across the country, completely financially sovereign, standing on her own two feet, feeling better about her life than she's ever felt before. Why? Not because of me and that question or that challenge to her, but simply because she was willing to take inventory. So if you want to grow this thing, and if you want to grow your life, and I was actually just doing a, I'm working on a project right now, and I was meeting with someone today, and this was one of the things she asked me, she said, Zach, she said, she said, what do you think that you help people to do the best? And I think that it's not about me, it's just what I've learned is, is that you're capable of more. And I don't mean that you're capable of more from how many conversations you have every day, although you are. And I don't mean you're capable of more in terms of how active you are in the Facebook groups, even though you are. And I don't mean in terms of more in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, how many follow-ups you do every single day, even though you, you are capable of more. I, it's not about that. What I know is that you're capable of more in terms of who you're being. You're capable of more compassion. You're capable of more forgiveness. You're capable of more integrity. You're capable of more honesty. You're capable of more peace in the world. You're capable of more value in other people's lives. You're capable of more consistency. You're capable of being more. And a lot of you have heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. Who you are being is more important than what you are doing because again, it's how people know you. How do people know you? And if you can solve that riddle, which quite frankly is not a riddle, if you're honest with yourself, you will grow your life exponentially and you will experience more of life with, within isogenics, outside of isogenics. You'll, I, I guarantee you, you'll experience more prosperity. You'll experience more fulfillment. You'll experience better relationships. You'll experience, you'll experience more intimacy with yourself and with and with and with your with your with your partner, should you want to have a partner, if you're attracting a partner, don't want to have a partner, regardless, no matter where you're at in your life, if you're willing to focus on the areas where you're out of integrity and cleaning the, those things up, life gets really simple. Who do you owe money to? Do you owe money to somebody? Clean it up. Who are you in conflict with? Clean it up. Who aren't you being clear with? Clean it up. Who are you lying to? Clean it up. Who are you holding hostage for past events? Clean it up. Where are you selling yourself short? Clean it up. Just clean it up. Just clean it up. And when you do, guess what's going to happen? You are going to fall so madly, deeply, incredibly, phenomenally, passionately in love with yourself that people will not be able to help but want to be around you and do whatever the hell you're doing. That's the magic trick. That's it. How many of you have had the experience where like someone walks in a room and you watch them walk in a room and you're like, I don't know, I, whatever, they, whatever they're having. Whatever, I'll, I'll have whatever they're having. Clean it up. Wherever you're out of integrity, clean it up. And guess what? Here's the thing. Cleaning it up sucks. It does. It blows. It does. It's, it's, it's not fun. It's, it's not fun. And it's the price of the promise. It's the price of the promise. You know how diamonds are made? Coal, severe amounts of pressure. Look at any transference in nature when something becomes something new. Metamorphosis of a butterfly. Painful. Painful. Birth. Painful. Not that I can speak from my experience, but I've observed. Brutal. But that's what breeds life. That's what gives life. So are you willing to clean it up? And where do you want to clean it up? 
and just get honest with yourself and get honest with other people in your life. And guess what? If you've lied in your life, if you've been a liar like I was, I was a terrible liar. My God. That's why I'm so brutally honest now. I'm on the other side of that reflection. That's really important for you to get. It's really important to get. Wherever you're out of integrity, I promise you that's a reflection of some light that you have in your life. Something phenomenal. That I can assure you. That I can assure you. If you're out of integrity in one area of your life, or if you feel a disconnect in an area of your life, I assure you that the shadow side of that is simply the flip side of a brighter side. So for example, if you find, if you believe that you're an insecure person, I promise you that's just the shadow side of you being an extremely confident person. And that's a really cool thing to consider. It's a really cool thing to consider. If you're an inconsistent person, that's just the shadow of you being remarkably consistent. If you lack discipline, that's the shadow of becoming disciplined and having freedom in your life. It's, there aren't a lot, like this is, look, it's taken me years and I continue to focus on these things and, and, to, and to want to expand myself. But, you know, ultimately, ultimately, there is no great secret to living a great life. Ultimately, there's no great secret to living a great life. So it's 802, we're over a little bit, but again, again, identify a couple of places in your life where you're out of alignment, out of integrity, and go to work on cleaning those up while staying in action with what you're doing. And if you're willing to compound that effort over time, you'll break through. You will, it's not. The, here's what I can tell you, and I don't know what your spiritual beliefs are, doesn't really matter, doesn't matter if you look at it from a spiritual perspective, a religious perspective, God, source, energy, whatever it is for you, quantum physics, does not matter. That thing is literally just sitting there waiting to deliver your desires to you. It's just waiting. It, it's it's the, the best way to look at it if you study anything by uh, Abraham Hicks. What they call it is they call it rockets of desire. You have these desires for your life and the universe, God, source, Jesus, Krishna, quantum field, whatever it is for you, whatever it is for you, literally just holds those things in an escrow account and basically just says, hey, as soon as you are willing to align your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, and your actions, the escrow account will be open and all of those rockets of desire will be received. And you can look at it and say, it sounds like a bunch of woo-woo hocus pocus, but here's what I know for me. I took a look at all the people were, that were saying the exact same things to me that I'm paying forward to you today. I looked at their results and I looked at my results and I asked myself the question of, well, at this point, what's the worst that could happen if I sell out to a different formula for living life in a good way? And oddly enough, the results they predicted came to fruition. So do whatever you want with that. I'm just the GPS. Hope you all have had a phenomenal evening. If you have any questions whatsoever, please let me know. I'm going to post in the group, what did you learn? Guess what? Here's a really good opportunity for you. For those of you that struggle to take action, just take that little action. Come into integrity. Give yourself little practice abilities. Okay, just, just put yourself into a situation where you take a little bit of greater action. That's it. That's it. And when you do that, when you deliver on that little action step, guess what? The unconscious mind goes, oh, that wasn't so bad. Let's go do it again. 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 And coming full circle, that's how you build trust with yourself. And therefore, that is how you will have other people come to trust you. And that's the secret sauce. Have a good night, everybody. Talk to you all soon. Bye.